You want to sell digital products in 2024 on your own website. You don't want to rely on someone else's platform. In this video, we're going to show you how to make your own e-commerce store on Squarespace from scratch. So let's get into it. We're going to be using Squarespace in today's video. Squarespace is one of our favorite website builders that we use for our own digital products. Squarespace has a bunch of features on the commerce side and the design side that makes it really easy and user friendly to use even if you don't have any experience. So first and foremost, you will need to have a Squarespace account to start designing in Squarespace. You can just sign up with your email. It takes only a few minutes. You don't have to start paying for your template yet. You do get a free two weeks to start designing your template. And then after that, you will have have to start paying if you want to keep your website. Once you have your account set up, you will go into your dashboard right here and you will go up to the top right corner where it says create website. When you click the drop down menu, you will see a few options. So you can choose from a Squarespace template or you can build your own template, which is what we will be doing today. They have tons of different templates, but we like to do our own when we're creating our templates. So when you select build your own template, that will allow you to choose from different sections that they have and you can kind of choose what you think would be best on your website. So that is what we're going to do today. So go ahead and click that and you will see this pop up. Go ahead and click let's go. So it's going to have you name your site. You don't have to name it anything crazy right now, but I'm just going to put my site for now and then we can always change that later. Now you can go in and select different sections for your homepage. So I'm just going to do the intro, the products and about section, and then I'll do a footer section. You can always change this later on and you can always move your sections around, but we'll start with that just to keep it simple. So now you can choose a color palette. I'm going to go with more of like like a neutral color and then again we can change that later on and then of course choose your font I'm gonna go with this font right here so now that we have our section selected you'll see that it's basically populated our page right here our home page and now is the fun part of actually editing your site so the website that we're gonna be designing as an e-commerce site is gonna be like a PLR website where people can buy PLR products to resell on their shop but this is applicable to any e-commerce website While we won't be going over all the nuances of uploading physical products and all the things that go into that we will cover all of the main things like uploading your photos, doing the listing descriptions, all of that stuff. So some of those things will cross over into physical products, but for now we will just be focusing on the digital product selection for this website. Right off the bat, some of the easiest things you can do to make your website stand out are just putting some photos of your products and some text and one or two buttons. So you can see here, we got two photos of the product left and the right side, and then the text, it's gonna be hard to read when there's photos in the background, so you put a block behind the text, you can add some branded colored elements if you want, and now we already have a website in the works. Now that we have our header finished, let's go into the product section and start actually uploading our products. So you're going to go up to the exit at the top left and go over to selling. And over here, you're going to see where it says products. Click on that. And then you're going to go to downloads. Digital products sounds like what digital products would be, but this is actually just for courses, videos, and member sites. So go to downloads and this is where you're going to start uploading all of your products. So go ahead and select add download and it will bring you to this page. So you'll see right here, you'll have your product name, your description, your images, your inventory. So this is where you're going to upload your file for people to download your product. And then you'll have things like your category and tags and then also some extra selling tools right here. So let's go ahead and start uploading our products. I already batched all of the products on Canva that we will be uploading onto this site. So the mockups for that are already done. So go ahead and upload your files. After you upload your images, go ahead and type out your product name. Next, you'll put your description. Now, for the sake of the video, we're just gonna do lorem ipsum, but in your description, some key things that you'll wanna focus on is a really good description of what they're gonna get with the product, how many pages are included, what software they're gonna to need to use to edit the product, say like Canva, any of those types of softwares that they may need to use to edit your product. You'll also wanna focus on some keywords in here as well to help boost your SEO, but you don't have to go crazy with that because they do have an SEO section at the bottom, but make sure that you're adding a really good description of what the customer is gonna get and what the product is for. Next is the inventory section, which is really easy because you just import the digital file 
file here, so it could be a zip file. If it's multiple files or just one unit, you put it in here, and then you can put the price, and you can even have an on sale section so people can see an original price cropped out with a new price, which will incentivize to buy it now. If you're gonna be selling a lot of digital products, then I would highly recommend doing the categories for each of the products just to help the user sort through your products easier. So since this is a PLR website, we're gonna be selling a lot of things like Instagram templates, maybe some Squarespace templates, Canva templates, things like that. So having this categorized will help the user experience be so much easier for them to navigate where they wanna go. So all you have to do is hit the plus button and then you can add your own category. So since this is an Instagram template, I'm just gonna add Instagram template hit add and then you'll see that it will be checked right there next is your tag section which is an easy place for you to put some keywords for SEO so if you want to get found in the search engine make sure to look at different synonyms for your products that you're trying to sell and put them here in the tags and that'll help you get more rankings down here are some extra tools that you can use you'll see that you can have this as a featured product they also can do related products and product reviews so related products you can also just showcase other products that are are relevant to this product when someone is viewing it on your website and then down here is just marketing so this will show you exactly what Google is going to show your listing as so you'll see right here it will show it as PLR Instagram post template and then the description will automatically be generated by the search engine so once you have your product name your description and your images and the files uploaded with the pricing go ahead and go up to save and hit publish and you will have your first product live Now that you have your products uploaded in the product section, this part is super easy. So now what you're going to do is select your product listing, hit edit, and then you're going to search the product that you're going to upload on your featured products section. And then you can edit the design of your listing. So you can go over here, you can have it centered, you can have it over to the left, you can do the right. You can choose things like having the title on there, the price, the description, the add to cart button, and the product quick view, which I like to have the product quick view selected which is basically when you hover over it will automatically change to the next image in the sequence but you don't have to have that if you don't want to and once you have the settings that you want just go ahead and click out of there and you can do this for basically all of the products that you're going to have on your featured products list so what i'll do is just go ahead and duplicate this section and i'm going to have about six different products on the home page but you can do as many as you want i recommend doing about six to eight if you can um, you can also do as little as three or four, but I like to show as many products that I can. So I'm going to do six for now, and then I'll come back once that is done. After you have your featured listings done, now is the fun part of different key selling points that you can add onto your website for customers to read about. Now for this website, since it is a PLR website, we're going to do the key selling points that we've already designed the product for you and the hard work has already been done. So you can just purchase the product, maybe do a few small adjustments to it and then resell it and then you want to have as many call to actions on your website as possible this basically is a button or something that is enticing the customer to click through to view your product and to actually purchase so you'll see right here that we have two different sections with the main key points of why they should purchase from this shop as well as the button to click to view more products and you'll just want to make sure that you actually have the button linking to your storefront that is something that we will see a mistake made is that these buttons won't be linked to anything and then you're missing out on potential sales so make sure that these are linking to your store and then another thing that we love to add to any of our digital product websites is a section on how does it work so you can walk your customer through exactly what they can expect from purchasing the products to editing the products maybe downloading the products anything that's relevant to the product that you're selling you're gonna want to add a little section right here this will help your customer basically understand the process. It makes the purchasing experience a little bit less stressful with them knowing exactly what to expect. And again, we'll have that call to action at the bottom. And then we also have a section where they can reach out and contact us if they do have any questions. So these two sections are not mandatory by any means, but we do recommend having these on your website just because it does help customers feel a little bit more confident in their purchase. 
The nice thing about Squarespace is once you upload all of your products to the section, it will automatically have a storefront page for you. So when you click up at the store section, you'll automatically see all of your products listed right here. And you'll see your categories up here if you added categories. So it's really nice, it keeps it really organized and you don't have to redesign a whole nother page with all of your products on there. So you can edit this. I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that. Um, you can go ahead and edit your section and you can see different settings like how many columns you want, the spacing, text alignment, all of those things. I always like to have the add to cart button selected. That way people don't have to do too many clicks to get to the cart button, if that makes sense. So having that right there always makes it a lot easier for people to make a decision. So I personally like to have that selected. Some people will argue to not do that, but again, we like to do that. Um, and then you can choose things like having your category type on the sidebar, which will move that over on the side, or you can have it on the top and a bunch of other little small settings that you can get into as well as your colors of the page and all of that fun stuff. And you can add your sections. So if you do have a section that you want to add, like maybe a new header or contact form at the bottom or any other type of section, you can go ahead and add that. But I like to keep the store pretty simple and straight to the point of here's the products and basically have everyone view what you have on your store. And then another page that we would recommend having is a frequently asked questions page. This will help you a lot with not having to go back and forth in your emails with people asking questions. So think of a lot of different questions that people may have with your products. So with PLR products, a lot of the questions that we will get is, What's the licensing? What can I actually use these products for? How can I sell them? What's allowed, what's not allowed? So any sort of FAQ that your customer may have, like what type of software they may need, if they need a subscription with that software, et cetera, et cetera. So try and think of as many FAQs that people may have and list them on that section. For the FAQ section, I like to just add an accordion. I find that that's the easiest way to organize all of the information and it keeps it nice and compact. To do that, you're gonna go to add block and then you'll see the accordion section right here and then you can obviously drag that over there. To add your different questions, you just click on that, hit the pencil icon and then click on each individual item and then you'll go ahead and ask your question right here and then answer goes right there. So it keeps it really nice and organized and it looks really nice. So you'll see all of the questions that we have. And then when someone is actually on the website, when they click on that, that will expand and show them the answer to the question. So another thing that we like to do on the FAQ section is just have a little blurb about reaching out directly to us if there's something that they have a question about that maybe we didn't answer and we will have the little contact button to direct them to the contact page. So again, this is just really simple. You don't have to have anything super crazy. You don't even need to add images to this section if you don't want to. You can literally just have the accordion with the text and just keep it as that. Um, you can add the images like we do, but basically that is the gist of what you need to have on your FAQs page. Now let's talk about actually getting paid. It's an e-commerce site, right? So easy because you can connect PayPal or Stripe. And we personally choose Stripe because of the instant payout button. So let's say you're having a killer day, you're making a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand dollars, and you wanna take that money, put it in your bank account right now and go fly to Hawaii for the weekend. Well, you can do that with Stripe. Stripe also has a mobile app so you can check your stats on Stripe to see how much money you've been making each week. And you can also check on the Squarespace app. There's analytics there that'll show you how much traffic you're getting and how your sales are doing. And since we're talking about getting paid, if you wanna get more paid, go into the checkout in the cart section and activate the abandoned cart emails. Because when somebody abandons their cart, they're gonna get an email and you can send them 15% off or some sort of offer, and that's gonna get you more money in your pocket. There's a ton of different settings under your checkout section, which you'll see right here. And like we mentioned, the abandoned checkout recovery is something that we will always have turned on. Another thing under the checkout settings is the email sign up. Now we like to have this turned on because you can collect your customers emails, which will be really helpful for email marketing. And we always recommend to do this because if you send out emails to your customers, you have a higher chance of converting those customers again to purchasing newer products. So we always have that turned on. 
Squarespace has their own email marketing, which is really, really helpful. You don't have to have an external website for that, like Flowdesk or MailChimp or anything like that. It's already built into Squarespace, which is super helpful if you are just getting into the email marketing world and you want to have everything in one place. So that's something to definitely check out if you are setting up your shop and you want to collect emails for your email list. Something else that you want to change is your store policies, which is down here. Now you can go ahead and put in your return policy, your terms of service and privacy policy. Something that's really important is disclosing all of that information. So that way when someone is purchasing, they know exactly what to expect as far as the returns and all of those things. So make sure that you're filling this out here. When you're ready to launch, you can get a domain right in Squarespace. I used to get my domain from Google Domains because I thought Google was the best at that stuff, but they actually sold Google Domains to Squarespace. So now all of your Google Domains are in Squarespace anyway. And if you pay for the annual membership of Squarespace, you get a free domain. So go crazy, get a creative domain and send people to your website. And if you've already bought a domain and it's in your Squarespace account, you can just choose to use a domain that you already own. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and let us know what you guys want to see in the next video. Thank you guys again and we'll see you guys in the next video.